What's going on, Packer fans? Happy Wednesday. Welcome into this all-new episode of the Pack-A-Day podcast. I'm your host, Andy Herman. You can follow me on Twitter at Andy Herman NFL. Thanks so much for joining me today. Always appreciate your support. What I wanted to do today was open the doors and talk about David Bakhtiari because let's just put it out there. Everyone is frustrated by this. Everyone is a little bit pissed off by this and understandably so. From David Bakhtiari's standpoint, clearly he cannot be happy and satisfied with the status of his knee, not being able to play, going back to NFC Championship games in 2020 and in 2021 that he was not able to play in due to injury, to this affecting his legacy. To him, I'm sure, having to hear and see all of the comments online and everything that is being said about him. I'm sure it is massively frustrating for him and his family and everyone around him. It is clearly extremely frustrating for the Green Bay Packers. They put a huge investment into David Bakhtiari, immediately see him tear his ACL, and then miss a multitude of games because of it and just not being able to get back to where he was prior to the injury and just not being able to play games. The return on investment for all the millions and millions of dollars that they put into him has just not been there, not due to any fault of David Bakhtiari's. It just is what it is. I'm sure and asked, you know, Matt LaFleur has been asked about it on Sunday. It got asked about it on Monday. He is clearly pissed off about it. He doesn't get short very often. He was extremely short with the topic and basically just refused to talk about it on both days. So the Packers, Matt LaFleur, extremely frustrated about the situation, understandably so. Packer fans, extremely frustrated, understandably so. Going back to 2020, I know a lot of people think, and again, this is not David Bakhtiari just tore his ACL. I'm not saying he should have been back by that point, but 2020, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, NFC Championship game. I think a lot of people feel Bakhtiari's in that game. Packers might win. I know a lot of people feel 2021, 49ers, divisional round. If Bakhtiari's in that game, they maybe win that game. And he's not there. And you are now looking at 2023, injured ACL, December 2020. We're talking about week two, 2023, still having issues. That is massively frustrating as a fan base. And you just want to see your favorite players, your best players, your all pro players go out there and perform. And we haven't been able to see very much of David Bakhtiari. Maybe even more frustrating is the fact that when he has been out there, he's been freaking fantastic. So it's hard to reconcile sometimes of how On a week ago against Chicago, this guy goes out there, has seemingly great mobility, great movement skills, is running around the field like a kid in a candy store, happy to play football, looks amazing, and then a week later, he can't play. So frustrating for fans, frustrating for Bakhtiari, frustrating for the Packers, and literally everyone else, unless you're an opposing edge rusher for a team that's set to go against the Green Bay Packers, they're probably fairly happy about the situation. Other than that, it's just massively frustrating all around. Then you had, of course, Aaron Rodgers, Terrace Achilles on Monday Night Football on turf, which Bakhtiari has spoken about in the past. And then there's the theory that, well, maybe he just sat out because he didn't want to play on turf, which is a similar type of turf that Green Bay was playing on in Atlanta. His brother sends out a tweet basically surrounding the turf of like F around and find out and all these conspiracy theories and fan theories and everything else take shape. And there've been all those throughout the year that Bakhtiari is just collecting the money and doesn't really care that it's in his head, whatever the case may be. And that's where we're at with this entire situation because we don't know. And when there's this void of knowledge, when you don't know what the heck's going on, every little idea gains validity even if it's a crazy off-the-wall conspiracy theory, because nobody knows what the hell is going on. We just don't. We don't know what the situation is. And when the media members are asking Matt LaFleur about it, he won't talk about it. So if he doesn't talk about it and he shows frustration over it, that lends itself more to, all right, is this just a David Bakhtiari issue? And clearly the Packers aren't happy about it. And every little insert theory here that you want to bring up it, it's like it can't be disproven because we're in the void of just not knowing anything. And that is a, another layer of frustrating and frustration that just goes on with this whole saga that's been going on since December of 2020. And I would love to hear more from Matt LaFleur and the Packers. What are, what are you protecting at this point? 
Are you protecting a competitive advantage? You can tell us exactly the situation with the knee and every detail around it, and you are not losing any competitive advantage because you don't know if he's going to play any given Sunday anyway. So just say it. Just say what's going on. Like, just just come out and say it and get it out there, and it's going to help you. It's going to help Bakhtiari. You're going to stop getting asked about it. It's going to be stop being written about. All of it. It can just, this entire distraction that's, you know, that is David Bakhtiari at times right now, and continues to get asked about and prodded about, etc., can just go away if you just open up and say, here's the situation. Like, let me, let me tell you heart to heart. Here's the situation. Here's where we're at. And here's why it's a problem. And here, so on and so forth. Like just do it, and 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 I guess unless there's a HIPAA situation where you know, they can't talk about it because you know and Bakhtiari doesn't want them to talk about it, then their hands are tied, and I understand. And who, that that just there's layers upon layers of just unknowns and frustration and whatever, and it sucks. It all the way sucks, and it felt like it felt like going back to last year that maybe we were over this from a game standpoint. If you go back to last year, misses the first two games still from the initial 2020 injury that's been carrying over from time, had that one game that he played in 2021 against Detroit, misses the the end of 2020, plays the half of a game in 2021, comes back in 22, misses the first two games of 2022, then comes back, plays a few games, misses the Washington game, plays the remainder of the game, save for a few due to the appendectomy at the end of the year. But you look back due to knee injury, once he came back in week three, he only missed that one game due to the knee injury. Plays in week one this year. And you're starting to think, I don't care if he practices, especially if the results are like they were in week one against Chicago, where he just went and balled out and looked amazing. Who the frick cares if that dude practices at this point? If he can go out and play at that level, just get him out there as many snaps as you possibly can. But you're thinking, all right, the Packers have basically said this is going to be his practice regime. He's not going to practice. Who cares? He's going to be in the games on Sundays. That's going to be fine. But you make it to week two and he's already out, not playing in week two. And now Pandora's box is open and you don't know what the heck is going to happen from here on out. Say it one more time. It's just frustrating for everyone. No questions asked. So I get anyone that wants to be pissed about the situation, frustrated about the situation, by all means. I understand. Not judging you. Totally get it. Let's talk about though, to just sort of get a better understanding because we don't know a lot. Let's talk about what we do know. In January of 2022, Bakhtiari did a interview with Aaron Nagler of Cheesehead TV. This was back in January 2022. Remember, he injured his knee December 31st, 2020, prior to the the playoffs starting. So December 31st, 2020 is when he heard it. January 2022 is when Aaron did this interview with David Bakhtiari for Cheesehead TV. I'm going to summarize some things. I'll read some things that Bakhtiari said specifically. But David said he tore his ACL, but also hurt his meniscus and had a cartilage issue as well. He had surgery, worked towards coming back, ended up with about 30 to 35 cubic centimeters of fluid in his knee. Ideally, you want that in the 20 to 30 range. At least that's, you know, that's where he said Brian Bulaga played at. That's where he wanted to be at. But 30 to 35 cubic centimeters, which is a lot of fluid in his knee. Remember that number moving forward. He ended up getting his knee drained 15 times throughout the season. I just want to pause things right there. Because he even mentions in the article that every time you drain your knee, it's not great for your knee. Every time you open it up and have to do something, it's not great. But he was desperate to get back and play. So he kept draining his knee with the hopes that he would be able to come back and play that season with his guys that they were making an incredible run throughout the course of that 2021 season. They go 13 and three or 13 and four. I forget how many games they had the year, but they go 13 wins again and they go to the playoffs. And Bakhtiari was doing everything he could to get back and play that year. He drained his knee 15 times. So this idea that he doesn't care, that he's just trying to, you know, he's just collecting the paychecks and doesn't really, it just doesn't add up. You don't drain your knee 15 times in a season to get back and play if you don't care about getting back to playing. So let me just pause it there. We'll unpause now and get back to where he was at. At one point, he said, remember 20 to 30 is the goal for cubic centimeters of fluid in his knee. He had 30 to 35 when it was starting to become a problem. At one point, he said he had 96 cubic centimeters of fluid in his knee. They also went in and at different time, they found ripped cartilage in a new spot in his knee. And ultimately, the doctors told him not to play, to just completely shut it down. 
He wasn't super satisfied with that response from Dr. McKenzie, so he sent his MRI to Dr. Neil Alatrache. I'm probably mispronouncing that. My apologies. That name may sound familiar. That is the doctor who just did the surgery on Aaron Rodgers this past week. So back in 2021, he or 2020, 2020 or 2021, it would have been. He sent his MRI to Dr. Neil Alatrache, Alatrache, and had him review it and his review was the exact same as Dr. McKenzie's and said, don't play football. You need to rest it. Eventually, he ended up having another scope in November 18th of 2021. And this is what David Bakhtiari said, quote, so we went in with the scope and I had a little defect in my trechlear, trochlear uh, groove. They cut that and smoothed that out while they were in there. I was also complaining constantly about this lateral side of my knee. I had this huge scar tissue band that was restricting me, so they cut that. Behind my knee on the fat pad, I had a scar tissue that was rubbing on the cartilage, which ended up ripping a little bit of that cartilage, and they cut that out. After all of that, I feel so much better. Now it feels a lot better, but now the issue is that I didn't get over my first surgery, and now I've had two surgeries in a calendar year, and I've got bruising all over my knee. So, excuse me, bruising all over my knee, unquote. At one point after that, he was still sitting at 50 to 60 cubic centimeters of fluid, and he wanted it all, once again to try to get down to 20 to 30 cubic centimeters of fluid. He eventually plays in that Detroit Lions game in 2021 to see if he could make it go and just kind of work his way through it. After that game, he said he had 88 cubic centimeters of fluid back in his knee. So it was an issue again. He said structurally he was good, but the fluid remained a major issue. At the end of the article, it says at the time he said, and when they finished this article and when he talked to him in January 25th of 2022, he said he no longer had long-term concerns with the knee. He just needed the time off. So the thought process at that point was that he just needed to take a bunch of time off, rest his knee, and then he'd be able to come back in 2022 and be able to play throughout 2022 when it wouldn't be an issue. He just needed rest on his knee. Structurally, it was good. That was the end of that interview. In July of 2022, prior to coming back, remember he came back in week three of 2022, but in July training camp 2022, he sat down with Matt Schneidman of The Athletic and said, quote, my knee feels normal and that's the biggest plus adding that his knee never felt normal after his first ACL surgery in early 2021. Quote, now it's just getting that normal feeling again when I play football. So that's what it is. The load, stress, strength, but we're not really in an ACL issue. It's actually been a long time. Uh, it's been a long time ago that we've put that chapter to bed. It's just there are other issues that, we've na that we're navigating around. I would say I really enjoy how my knee functions, operates, and moves. So it's not the ACL, it's more of this continued fluid issue, the inflammation issue, all of those sorts of things, but it's not really the ACL issue anymore. That was July, 2022, again with Matt Schneidman of The Athletic. He ends up missing, as I mentioned, weeks one and two of the season in 2022. He played weeks three through six, missed week seven with the knee issue, played weeks eight through 12, missed weeks 13 to 16, including the bye week in there with the appendectomy, and then finally played weeks 17 and 18 as well, which remember, well, I, I take that back. Week 17 and 18, they were still in the playoff hunt. So um, they, they were obviously still going through everything and trying to make the playoffs, but he played through the entirety of last year, other than the basically one game in Washington, the appendectomy, and then the two games to start the year, well, he was still coming back. He then played in week one of this year, didn't play in any of preseason, hasn't practiced much, but here we are in week two or following week two, where he did not play in week two due to the knee injury. We're in week three and we have no idea what's going to happen from here. And it is still having issues. So here's what I don't know. Just wholeheartedly look you in the eye. I don't know. I don't know if this was a turf thing in week two and he was just trying to make some statement. I don't think it's that, but I can't look you in the eye and tell you for sure. I don't know what the injury issue is. I don't know if this is something that's going to be long-term, short-term. I don't know if this is just the one week like it was against Washington last year, and then he came back and played the majority of the rest of the year, save for the appendectomy. I don't know if he's ever going to be right ever again. I guess it's probably not, but I have no idea. I don't know if this is going to be his last year as a Packer or if he's going to continue on. I don't know if he retires after this season. I don't know if he's ever going to play again. I like as we sit, As I'm sitting here recording this, on Tuesday night, 1028 on September 19th, 2023, I have no idea if he's ever going to play football ever again. 
Like he could easily be back this week and play 80 snaps of offense or whatever they end up needing to play this week and look awesome. He could never play. I have no clue. I don't know if he, again, I don't know if he could play every game for the Packers again this year. Maybe that's the case. Maybe it's the exact opposite. Maybe he plays every game this year, every game next year and rides off into the sunset at some point and he looks awesome. Who? I, I have no idea. I don't know what's going to happen from here on out. Here's what I do know. Here's what I absolutely do know. I know that prior to his knee injury in 2020, Bach played in 118 out of 124 possible games. He missed two games in 2015 and four games in 2017. This was not a player that was coasting. This was not a player that missed a ton of time due to injuries. He played in 118 out of 124 regular season games that he could have possibly played in, missing six in his entire time prior to the injury in 2020. So not, again, not a injury prone player, not a player that was apt to take time off. He missed six games prior to that out of 124. I also know that he has 21.4 million reasons to play and play well this season. You may know that he has a $40 million-ish contract next year. What you may not know is that 19 of that is guaranteed. What that means is he already made that money. They paid it in the form of a signing bonus. That money already was in his checking account and is not going to be paid to him next year. What he is due next year is $21.4 million if he plays for the Green Bay Packers next year. If he looks awesome this year and plays the entirety of this season and Green Bay has a good year, they probably just bring him back next year and pay him the $21.4 million additional to have him play next year. If he doesn't and this knee injury continues to be an issue, they release him and get off of that $21.4 million and they don't have to pay it to him then assuming that they don't have to release him with an injury designation, which is a whole nother can of worms. But if he gets to play for Green Bay and they keep him on that contract, he's $21.4 million richer. Now for David Bakhtiari, it's a little bit different than you and I, but $21.4 million is nothing to sneeze at. I don't care who you are. And you might be thinking, you know, like even if Green Bay releases him, he'll just find another team. So like, is it really that big of an issue? If he doesn't make it through this season and Green Bay doesn't want to keep him on the team next year and they release him because they can't trust his knee, I do think if he wanted to play next year for another team, some team would take a flyer. He's too good. There's a GM in New York that would probably want to take a look at him. If he gets a deal, at most, he probably gets a very minimal guarantee, if anything, with a lot of playing time incentives that are baked in. And maybe a contract that if he hits all of the incentives and makes a Pro Bowl or an All-Pro or something like that, he gets like $10 million or something. He's still going to lose at least half of that money. And I think it's actually probably a lot more. I think he probably gets something in like the $5 million range with incentives if he were to sign, if he if his knee just wasn't good enough to, to basically play well this season and Green Bay just kind of shut him down at some point. So yeah, he could probably recoup some of that money. It's not going to be anywhere near $21.4 million. So I know that he has a lot to play for this season. If he can stay healthy, look great, and this Green Bay team looks good with him in that lineup, Green Bay is going to want to keep him next year, and there's there's a lot of incentive there. I also know that David Bakhtiari, when he came out of the college, he's a, he's a good athlete, but this is not like just the most imposing, physically dominant player in the history of the world. David Bakhtiari wins with one specific thing, technique. He mastered, and I mean mastered, the craft of playing left tackle in the NFL. Maybe one of the best that I've ever seen technically at the position, which is, it was, you know, the, I, I think I've talked about the matrix a little bit too much, but like the point in the matrix at the end of the first one where Neo puts his arm behind his back and is just fighting Smith off like one-handed it was just like, and he was like basically yawning because it was so easy to fight him off. That was Bakhtiari and still sort of is Bakhtiari at left tackle. Like at the prime of his powers, he was just, it was, he was, he might as well have been in a recliner, just like, you know, eating popcorn because it was so easy for him to just fight off whatever defensive, you know, amazing edge rusher was across from him. And it was because he mastered his craft. And I know that you don't get to that point without insane hard work incredible work ethic and the want to be great and the want to be an amazing football player. 
So I know that this is not just like some laziness, lazy issue or anything like that because he was a master of his craft based on hard work. That's just in his DNA of who he is as a player. And you don't get to that level without caring a lot. And his attention to detail in practice when you would go and watch him at training camp and the time that he would put into other players around him to try to make them better, that's just the kind of guy that he has been out on the practice field. He cares a ton. I also know that he cares about his legacy and he wants to be considered as one of the great left tackles of all time. And the only way that you get that, the only way you get that recognition, that Hall of Fame potential is by playing and going out there, improving it and showing that you are one of the best players in the world. And he hasn't been able to do that. And I know that that bothers him. This was his quote at the end of the Cheesehead TV article said, quote, I mean, you think I want to miss a whole season? I want to play with the guys. The biggest thing I realized is how much I actually care about the game. I really am that loser football dude who loves football. That's what I know, that this is a guy who has put everything into this game. And if he could possibly be out there playing, I wholeheartedly believe he would be out there playing. Those are the things I know. Here are the things that I think. I think he cares a ton and I think he wants to be back out there right now playing football and would do anything in his power to be able to do so. I think that every time he steps on the football field, bad knee or not, he is still one of the best offensive linemen in all of football. I think that this is probably his last year as a Green Bay Packer. I think when push comes to shove, Green Bay will have lost its appetite to continue on and just keep going with this. I think they're going to realize it's time to go in another direction one way or the other. And I think David Bakhtiari will probably agree that it might be time to go in another direction as well. That's what I think. I don't know that. Just my best guess and hypothesis at this point. I think to some degree, his knee is just freaking effed. I think it's just effed. I think when we want to throw out there all the different conspiracy theories of what's going on and what do the Packers think and what do Bakhtiari thinks, I think the easiest, most obvious answer is usually the right one, and his knee is just effed. And they are trying to do their best with scotch tape and popsicle sticks to make it so that he can get through as many games as he possibly can before he has to shut it down for good. And there's going to be some weeks that he can do that, and there are some other weeks that he will not be able to do that. Don't know that for sure, but that's what I think. And I think he legitimately is doing everything he can to be on the game field as much as humanly possible. Maybe not the practice field. I don't think he wants to be out on the practice field all that much. I think he legitimately wants to do everything in his power to be out there on game day, being the best left tackle in football, at least in the conversation. That's what I think. How this ends up, I have absolutely no freaking idea. Not even going to guess. Just remember that this sucks for everyone. Nobody is winning because of this. And especially David Bakhtiari, who, like I said, cares an immense amount about this game, about his legacy, and has shown that he wants to be out on the field, being the absolute master of the craft that he is, and playing at the highest of levels of any offensive lineman that's really almost ever played this game. That's going to do it for me today. Shout out to our Hall of Fame members, Most Hated Minnesotan, PJ Wynn, John Wild, Shea Bradad, Arnaldo Espinosa, Boom Handle, and Jennifer Wright. Appreciate you guys a ton. I'll be right back here tomorrow with an all new episode. Uh, you can check me out with Sam Monson of Pro Football Focus. Who knows? Maybe I'll have another bonus episode too. You never quite know. But until next time, and as always, go Pack Go.